Let's pray. Lord, I ask you these next few moments to put me on as your microphone and to speak your word articulately and accurately through me to help every person in their faith today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, my goodness. We're going to, I, I thought I was done last week with our series on faith. And I no sooner than went out of here, and usually pretty early after I leave Sunday, I'm asking God to fill me back up and get me ready for next week. And very quickly, I, 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 I did not feel I was done, that I needed to continue the message of faith at least one more week. And... Um, that being said, uh, I've been studying, and, and I, I'm so excited as I begin to put things together, and I want to bring a message I've never preached before. It's called the process of faith, the process of faith. So I want to take you back, and let's just pick up a little bit, get our minds refreshed to what we've been studying. The, the series we've been called is The Just Shall Live by Faith. You are the just. You are a born-again Christian. You're the justified. That means you've been declared innocent by the judge, and there can never be another trial against you. You are innocent, and you are the just. We live by faith. Now, our first part of the series, we talked about the pillow of faith. We talked about how Jesus was in asleep on a pillow in the midst of a storm, while his disciples were in panic. And when you have a word from God, you don't have to panic, praise God. It doesn't matter what the storms do. It doesn't matter what the winds do. You will get to the other side if Jesus is on your boat. We talked about the word of faith. We talked about how all faith is derived from the word of God. Okay, we talked about how faith is a substance that God used when he created everything. And God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be a firmament. And God said, let there be uh, land and sea. And God said, let there be this and let there be that. And it was so. God created everything using his words. His words became the substance of all life as we know it. And when we have faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Faith is based on the word of God. That is our substance and evidence of things we cannot see. And, and the simple, you, if I ask you today, are you excited to go to heaven? Every one of you would say, yes, I want to go to heaven. How do you know you're going to go to heaven? Because how? The Bible tells me so. How do you know you're saved? Because the Bible tells me so. Your faith, the, your expectation, your hope, your evidence is in the scriptures of the holy word of God that tell you, and when God says it, we believe it, and that settles it. We talked about our faith family photos, which we'll get to in a moment, a snapshot of our faith in a moment in time. We talked about great faith versus no faith, why faith is important. We talked about the fundamentals of the faith. We talked about shipwrecked faith and exceedingly growing faith. We talked about this pew of faith, how we started with just an old church and an old church pew. But we took what we had, and look what God did. Riley, and man, if you, if you missed last week, and, and look, man, it was an ice storm. Faith, does, if you're five miles from the nearest main road, it's not necessarily, if you don't have four-wheel drive, it is not necessarily faith to go to church. We understand when we have church, when the weather is bad out, not everybody's going to come, and that's okay because we have those cameras all around us, and I can preach to the cameras, and you can watch us online, praise God. Amen. I'd rather you watch online and live. Amen. Don't be unwise. But the main roads were clear as a bell, however clear a bell could be. <laughs> clear as day. I think that's the clear as day. That's right. Got my things messed up there. All right. But last week, Riley Hendrickson gave his testimony. And, buddy, I was blown away. When the, you know, for him, every time, every Wednesday, every Sunday, every Monday rehearsal is a miracle. 
because the doctors told him he has, and, and don't, this is not a joke, okay, don't, don't, but he has had several abnormalities in his brain that his coordination would never work. And basically, playing a guitar would be impossible. And he was told his whole life, you can't do that. You don't dream big, you won't be able to do it. And he got a hold of Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to allow the doctors to set my limits. I'm going to allow God to set my limits. And when he was 15 years old, he went into a music store and picked up a bass guitar. And one day after another, after another, he just began and said, I'm not going to quit. And then we let him play a bass solo last week. And buddy, you talk about getting down. We got down in here. Amen. All the, all the ice began to melt. Hallelujah. Then it refroze after he stopped. So that's kind of a nutshell of where we've been the past four weeks. Also, last Sunday night, and we just had terrible weather. We've had terrible weather all year. Uh, four of the last six Sundays, we had major snow or ice on a Sunday morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, but last Sunday night, we had Pastor Modris here from Latvia, and he tore it up, buddy. We were going to bring him back on a Sunday morning. He was just phenomenal. We got to get him back in the States. Um, the uh, photos of our faith. Romans 12, 3, and this is where we're going to start getting back into the meat. Romans 12 and 3 tells us that God has dealt each one a measure of faith. And I'm going to prove that to you here in a little bit. But every single human being on this planet that has ever been born has been given a measure of faith. Okay? Now, what you do with that faith is your choice. In the New Testament, as we read through it, and if you just do a word study and you pull up faith and you look at, there's dozens of descriptions of people's faith in the New Testament. And we've been making this kind of the crux of our message, okay? And there are positive descriptions of people's faith. There are also negative descriptions of people's faith, okay? And so I'm going to read some of these descriptions. These are all in the New Testament. So here we go. There are people that had great faith. There are people that had holy faith, overcoming faith, precious faith, steadfast faith, walking faith, purifying faith, genuine faith, perfect faith, rich faith, subduing faith, sound faith, common faith, obedient faith, strong faith, good fighting faith, abounding faith, full of faith, bold faith, nourishing faith. Sincere faith and exceedingly growing faith. And then there are some people who took that measure of faith, the same measure that we all got somehow, and yet their faith produced futile faith, lacking faith, shipwrecked faith, empty faith, overthrown faith, disapproved faith, weak faith, little faith, no faith, vain faith, or absent faith. And yet we all were dealt a measure of faith. So today, and over the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of looking at that spectrum, and we compared the disciples in the storm when Jesus said they had no faith to a centurion who Jesus said, they, this guy is the greatest example of faith I've seen. And we compared those two. And then last week, we compared uh, shipwrecked faith versus exceedingly growing faith. Today, I want to talk about the process of faith. We're going to talk about God's faith, your faith, and their faith. And we're going to talk about the why, the over-encompassing purpose of faith in our lives. Now, we've already hit that to a degree, but I'm going to zero in on something really big today. Number one, God's faith. God is the author of faith. 
He used faith to create the universe, okay? There was a bunch of nothing, okay? Now, some people will tell you that out of nothing became something, but they have no explanation for that something other than potentially an alien life form planted a single cell that blew up somehow. And then over billions and billions and trillions and, and such, we evolved. And here we are today. However, I believe that God, who always was, always is, always will be, looked, according to the Genesis chapter 1, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, said, let us create. Then God said, let there be light. And it was so. And God used his words to take nothing and turn it into creation that we have today. That is faith. God took nothing and made it into something using what? His words. God then gives us his words. We've been given the name of Jesus. We've been given his holy word that we may use it because life and death are in the power of our tongue. Amen. Now then, we've already covered this, but here's where I'm going to take a little bit deeper. God is the author of faith. God creates you. Then God breathes his life into you. You are a spirit. You're not just a flesh. You, all, you have a flesh, this is your earth suit, but your earth suit, inside of your earth suit, is a soul. That is your mind, your will, and your emotions. But even deeper than your soul is your spirit. <laughs> that is the, the, what is going to live forever, that God breathed his very life into to create you. And when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that spirit was born again and will live forever in eternity. But you could not have accepted Christ as your Savior without faith, right? Everything you get from God is by faith. So when you were a sinner, were you in right standing with God? No. How did you have the faith to get saved if you were not in right standing with God? You were given a measure of faith. Okay? Now, we're going to take this a little deeper and it's really going to, we're going to tie it all together here in a minute. Every human being has faith. What they choose to do with it is their business called free will. To believe God, to believe false gods, to believe no God. All those take faith. Even you say, well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in anything. Well, that takes great faith. As a matter of fact, it takes greater faith to be an atheist than it does to be a Christian. That's true. You say, well, I'm an atheist. I don't have a religion. Actually, that's also a false statement. Because our Supreme Court has ruled that atheism is indeed a religion. And I don't understand if, a if atheism, if, if all it was, was unbelieving, why are they so hell-bent on destroying your belief? <clears throat> now, this isn't original material, but uh, <clears throat> there's a Christian comedian. He's hilarious. <clears throat> and he does a routine because atheists have churches. They literally have atheists, even in Indianapolis, there are atheist churches. And there's actually some denominational churches that aren't much different. But, <clears throat> or, <laughs> did I say that? That, that, that leaked out. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. What do you say, what kind of praise and worship do you have in an atheist church, you know? Shout to, and this is this is from a comedian. He said his song was Shout to No One. Let the earth sink. <laughs> praise and majesty to no one. No one loves the little children. <laughs> 
I mean, I mean what, did, what in the world do you sing at an atheist church? Yeah. And, and <laughs> no one loves the little children. <laughs> now, some people take the faith that God gave them and use it against God through atheism or agnosticism. You say, how does that happen? Well, the devil did this. <laughs> Lucifer took his giftings. Lucifer was the most beautiful angel. Lucifer, I believe, was the Ezekiel. There are two or three passages in Ezekiel that tell us, that give us insight that Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of heaven. Okay? And he took his giftings and his beauty that was created by God and given to him by God. He took his authority and his anointing that was given to him by God and the faith that went with it, and he took those things and he used it against God and formed a rebellion, okay? <laughs> and you say, well, that's terrible, and it was, and it still is. But, you know, in, in our business world today, it's nothing for... <clears throat> um, Maybe uh, someone to rise up in a company, maybe a company that has like 15 or 20 employees, and someone comes in and there's a really good boss, a, the owner of the company, and he kind of grooms that person and trains that person and begins to give that person responsibilities. And then after a while, that person maybe gets a little too big for their britches, and they leave that company. And then they take, they go out and start their own company and take some of the customer base and maybe even some other employees with them to do that. Now, uh, that, in a business world, that's called, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That's just business, okay? And, and truly, it, that is just business. That is capitalism. But there are people that do that with such a, a disloyal heart and sometimes violate ethics to do that. And as terrible as that is, can I tell you something that's even worse than that? And that is, there are people in churches that do that. There are people that take the giftings and anointings and faith that was given to them by God and also the credibility bestowed upon them by a spiritual leader, and then they take those giftings, they take that credibility, they take that anointing, and then they eventually turn on their spiritual leader and cause division and strife and sometimes even take, and, and there, you've heard of what's called a church split or that type of thing. That, that's that same concept. Now, I'm not saying every person that's ever been a part of that's going to hell. I'm not, I'm not, don't, don't take a, 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 a doctrinal statement from that. That's not a doctrinal statement. <clears throat> but it is an example of how we can take the giftings and the faith and the things that God has trusted us with and not use them to build his kingdom, use them to build our kingdom, or sometimes even use them to work against his kingdom. Okay? Now I'm going somewhere. You hang with me here. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the atheist. But also, here's a question that many people have had. Pastor Matt, what about people who've never had a chance to hear the gospel. Let's say they live in what we call the 1040 window. And I want to make sure everybody knows what the 1040 window is. I think many people do. But the 1040 window, is, it's, it's uh, the lines of latitude that 10 degrees north of the equator to 40 degrees north of the equator. If you take that line and lay it across a flat map, that is where the majority of unreached people groups in our world live. Okay, places like New Guinea, uh, Indonesia. Uh, there's a lot of these, these the, 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 people, the majority of the remaining unreached peoples who've never heard the gospel, that's where they live. The 1040 window, that's why we call it that. Now, Pastor Matt, what about that person that a preacher never came to their island and they never heard the gospel? If they die, will they go to heaven or hell? And I think we've all had that question at one time. And I want you to turn in your Bible to Romans, and we're going to look at chapter 1, Romans chapter 1. And once we get to this, we'll have our foundation laid, 
And then I'm going to start building upon it. Romans 1, verse 18 through 23. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest to them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools." And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. And so let me give you the, 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 just make sure you understand what we just read here. What we just read is saying ever since creation, all of creation clearly testifies of the Godhead, not just Jesus, But God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All of creation testifies of these things. And it says that every person who does not and has not called on God will be without excuse because it is clearly made known in our hearts the knowledge of God if we'll receive it. And then it goes on to say, and many people take that faith, that knowledge, because God has dealt each one a measure of faith, and some have built for themselves their own gods out of their own hands. And let me just share this, just just to help put that to rest. Anyone, anywhere, who says, God, I, I know you're out there. I want to know who you are. I can tell you, without exception, that prayer will be answered 100% of the time. And I don't care if they live in the most remote island. Any cry of faith, God will answer. And you say, Pastor Matt, let me me give you an example. Tipshu Parmishwa from the island of Mauritius, somewhere off the coast of Africa, somewhere. And it was an island where there were no Bibles, no churches, nothing. And Tipsu was on his deathbed, dying. (laughs) The witch doctors did everything they could. And I know Tipsu. Tipsu, (laughs) I I spent a lot of time with Tipsu. We call him Tips. And And here he is on his deathbed. And he says, and he cries out and says, God, God, there's no way there's any power in this witch doctor stuff. I know better. Show me who you are. And Jesus Christ revealed himself to Tipsu and began to speak to him scriptures. Not a whole Bible, but just, just a verse here and a verse there touched his body and spoke to him how to get to the United States. And at the moment he got to where he was supposed to get, God stopped the miraculous because he began to get it by natural means. But no matter where you are, a cry of faith will always be answered. Amen. So, Taking my time. Now, I want to talk about this. There are special endowments of faith that come from God. Now, everyone has been dealt a measure of faith. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it lists nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
one of those gifts is the gift of faith, okay? Now, what the gift of faith is, is when God lends you his faith. When God lends you his faith, and that is only for the purpose of advancing the kingdom. That is only for the purpose of advancing the kingdom. This is a special endowment of power to be able to use God's faith in a temporary situation. God's not going to give it to you permanently, but he will give it to you when it is needed. Now, not everybody has this gift, but oh man, it's a wonderful gift. Thank you. Uh, a Bible example of this, and we're going to kind of focus in on Peter, the rest of the message. Go into your Bible to Acts chapter 3. <laughs> Are you with me? I know we're just laying foundation, but don't you worry. We are going somewhere, and we're going to get there quick. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms from them who entered the temple, who seeing Peter, verse 3, and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Now that's a whole nother message right there. Verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with him, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now, this is not only the gift of healing and miracles, but this is the gift of faith. Okay? Now, let, let me tell you what just happened. Here's a guy. He's sitting. He's begging. He's clearly crippled. Can't walk. Peter walks up to him. He says, hey, can you give me something? Look, pal, I don't, I'm not going to give you money, but such as I have as I give you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Now, how many have ever prayed for a sick person before? Okay, good, 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 good. Well, wonderful. Now, how many of y'all have ever went up to somebody in a wheelchair and just said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk and pick him up? You didn't do that? What's wrong with you? It's in the Bible. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Now, am I challenging you to do it? No. Why? Because I ain't stupid. <laughs> what, what was in operation there? That was the gift of faith. I prayed for a lot of people in my day. I, I love praying for people. And, I, and I'll tell you, there are, there are times that God will begin to speak to me, just like today. How, how in the world, on February 18th of 2018, how am I going to know that there's somebody here that's flirted with a gang. Have I ever said anything like that before? No, not at all. And by the way, in those type of situations, if you're ever, and we know whether it's our kids or if you're ever in a mess like that, you know, maybe, maybe there is a gang affiliation and you need out of that gang. Look, man, I will go with you to that gang leader and I will plead for your life. And I will put myself between you and them. That's what we do around here. Okay, now there's not a whole lot of problems around here with gangs, but there are other problems. If a kid ever gets, gets a girlfriend pregnant, listen, man, we don't like that. Doesn't happen much around here because we teach purity. But the fact of the matter is, it could happen. And if it does happen, we're not going to turn our backs on that couple. I will do whatever I can. If i got to walk that kid to his parents and say, look, here's the deal. And be there with that kid, I'll do that. Okay? We'll put our necks out there for people. Understand? That's what we do as Christians. And that's not just me. That's all of us. That's all of us put our necks out there for people. Amen. Yeah. Now, <laughs> back to where we are. Prayed for a lot of people. 
But I will tell you, every now and then, God does give a little nudge and said, hey, do something that they couldn't do before. And he said, you like it when that happens, Pastor? No, I hate it. I said, really? Yeah, it's unco- it is uncomfortable. <laughs> you, you, why? Because what if I miss it? <laughs> you, you feel like your human frailty comes in, and you're like, man, if I miss this thing, everybody's going to think, he's a false prophet. All right? You, you put yourself on the line, buddy. And those are very uncomfortable situations to be in. But do you know what? God shows up. But I will tell you this. You better know it's God. Because if it's not God, number one, not only are you about to get embarrassed, but number two, you're about to get a lawsuit. Amen. And and you're not have friends who thought, well, hey, they did it, I'll go do it. And they didn't have the gift of faith operating at that time, and they got served a lawsuit, okay? Now, I think in some degree you got to say, hey, okay, the guy missed it, okay, let's forgive him and move on, but that's not the society we live in today. So, the key here is found in verse 16. Peter is being called out by the Pharisees on this great miracle. And let's look at verse 16 here. In his name, Peter's given the explanation, through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, now watch this, watch this. This is the, this is the key in your Bible, right here. The faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That's talking about the gift of faith. Peter is saying, look, we put our faith in Jesus, but then there's a special faith that came on us, the faith that comes through him. Faith in his name, but the faith that comes through him. There was a special faith in operation here, buddy, is what Peter's saying. Peter's saying, you just saw a miracle, and God is on the move, and you're about to miss it again. Now, one more thing, and then, man, we're about there. Just, just, just hang with me. You say, I, I know I'm not preaching, preaching. I'm teaching. It's okay to teach every now and then. You know, and, and, and the teacher, that's, y'all know what the fivefold ministry gifts are. The apostle, that's your thumb. He's the one that holds everything together. Pointer finger, that's, that's the prophet. He points the way. Middle finger, I hold them all up. The middle finger is the evangelist. He stands up tall and loud. The wet, wedding finger, that's the, one, that's the pastor. He's married to the church. But the teacher He's the one that's small enough to get in your ear, okay? So I'm teaching for a little bit. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Hyper faith. Anything that goes into a ditch can be an error, okay? And we've seen in our generation many ditches that the church has attempted to go into. The ditches of hyper grace, which is being preached from many pulpits right now. That is a ditch, and I believe that is a false doctrine, okay? Uh, There's a ditch of hyper holiness, okay? Thinking that you can impress God with your outward appearance, okay? Uh, Now, we do, should we be modest? Yes. Should our beauty be within? Yes. Amen. But, are you ever going to be righteous? By your works. No. There is a hyper doctrine of prosperity. Okay, we do not need gold plated doorknobs. Amen. Now, I am for prosperity. Now, there's a difference between prosperity and hyper prosperity. Now, if you weren't for prosperity, you should move out of America immediately. Okay, you are prosperous. I can, it, it, I, most of you here ate yesterday. You're prospering. Amen. I mean, you've heard me say this before. Our nation is so prosperous, our dogs are fat. So, anything, though, given to extreme excess can be sin. Faith, the same way, can be come 
a false doctrine when we do it hyper-faith. And the greatest examples I have of that come from the state of Indiana, uh, Jim Jones, uh, who led people to South Africa or South America and eventually killed many of them. But the one that, that really t- that speaks to me is a guy by the name of Hobart Freeman. Younger people probably don't know anything of this guy, but he was in northern Indiana. He was a pastor. He had a good church. But he began to preach hyper-faith and said, you know what? If you have faith, don't go to a doctor. That's what he said. I didn't say that. He said that. Okay? I say, go to a doctor. Amen. Um, he said, he would say, uh, don't, don't take your kids to doctors. Don't get vaccines. Don't do all this. And everything came around, came hyper faith. And in a one year period, well, 18 months, 89 people in his church died. That church got up to 5,000 people in a town of about 5,000 people. You know that? It was called the Glory Barn was the name of the church. And Hobart Fripp got off and had 5,000 people following him in northern Indiana. 89 people, including many kids, died because of not getting a shot of penicillin that would have saved their life. And Hobart Freeman, when the FBI was bringing charges, he himself died of gangrene because he would not go get treated. Hyper faith, folks. Listen to me. Take your kids to the doctor. Take your children to the doctor. Do everything medically you can possibly do for your children. I, I know there's great debate in science about this. But ladies and gentlemen, at least for the majors, vaccinate your children. Please, vaccinate your children. You say, uh, Pastor, I, you're, you're, mentally, you're getting in a, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But love your kids enough to give them the very best. Amen. Amen. And, and look, man, it, we're pray, we pray for our, our thing. We pray for ourselves, but I'm praying for my eyesight. But until God heals it, there's nothing wrong with wearing a pair of glasses. Amen. There's nothing wrong with not being perfect. Amen. That's okay. All right, praise God. But be in faith like Riley. But the day at age 15 Riley picked up that guitar, he didn't play like he plays now. It was a progression. Okay, The day we agreed to pastor in West Central Indiana, we didn't even have this pew. Then we got this pew and I... Uh, we didn't have this, con- th- th- this congregation or this building or this reputation or cameras and precious people. We had us four and no more and some old cold pews. And then, praise God, 10 or 15 people show up. You are some of the most wonderful people in the world. I, c- I got something special for you guys coming up, by the way, th- those 10 or 15 people. We got a special something coming up here in the next few months for you. You'll see. Hallelujah. I need, oh man, I'm, dang it. You guys got me. I just slowed down, take my time, so I want you to understand something, and then I run out of time. Now, that's God's faith. God's faith. God is the author of faith. God gives you a measure of faith. There are even times God gives you a special endowment of faith. Let's talk about your faith. Oh, i got to bring this home. Your faith, the last four weeks have been about developing your faith because your faith is how you receive from God. There, there are many, these scriptures are in your bulletin, but I, I just took the book of Luke. Uh, there they are right there. Luke 8, 48, Luke 17, 19, Luke 18, 42. All says uh, Luke 8 is, is the women with the issue of blood. Luke 17, I believe, is a leper. And Luke 18 is a blind man. And all of them came to Jesus, and Jesus said, Be it according to your faith. Your faith 
has made you whole. I want you to know today, when you take your faith and put it in the Word of God, and you have steadfast faith, exceedingly growing faith, abounding faith, a, a, a walking faith, that faith will put you in a place to receive the things God has for you. God gave you the initial measure of faith, and you take that faith, and you develop that faith, and God blesses that faith. Amen. Now, the mustard seed of faith, Matthew 13, 31, talks about the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It's the smallest seed. But when you put it in the ground and do something with it, it becomes a great tree. And when you get started in your walk with the Lord, you might just have a wee little tiny bit of a mustard seed of faith. And it doesn't look like much. And it doesn't feel like much. And maybe it can't do much. But the way the kingdom of heaven works is that's all you need. Because in Matthew 17... Jesus said, if all you got is a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done for you. You've got all you need already, praise God. You just got to use it. Now, let's talk. I want to just develop you for just, listen, Peter, gift of faith. Walking up to a man that's clearly crippled. Now, watch this now. Peter reaches down. The man is not healed yet. The man has not received anything yet. Peter pulls him up. And as he pulls, the guy's healed. That's great faith. Now, is anybody here right there? You ready for that? No? You weak faith people. You know what? Neither was Peter when he got started. Well, let's talk about the progression of Peter's faith. Peter was, uh, he was a disciple of John the Baptist. Okay? He was one of John's disciples. He's a fisherman. You know, when Peter's faith got really kick-started, Jesus says, cast your nets to the other side. What do you, let, me, let, me, let me bring this to 2018. When the Lord speaks to you about your career, When the Lord gives you insight for your job, he's trying to develop your faith. (laughs) And just cast your nets to the other side. Okay. Well, you know, maybe many of you aren't professional fishermen. That doesn't mean anything to you. But maybe take your boss a couple Starbucks today. It means something to you. Or maybe, you know, that thing you've been trying, try it differently today. Or maybe go encourage that coworker today. That's, see, Peter didn't start pulling people off the ground. Peter started by casting his nets to the other side. And then the second career decision Jesus asked Peter to make was leave your nets behind. Peter changed careers at the leading of, the, of, of Jesus. He obeyed that. How many of you know that takes great faith to leave your nets behind? Anyway, okay, so he does that. Then what happens? Well, Peter was with Jesus, and, and Peter had a faith, a faith lapse. Jesus teaching the 10,000 people, uh, hey, hey, Peter, guys, hey, I need you to feed these guys. Feed those 10,000 people. Uh, how? Rallies is closed, man. All right, Peter. You didn't do so well with that one, so here's what we're going to do. Can you at least get them to sit in groups of 50? I think I can do that, boss. So now what's Jesus doing? Okay, Peter, you weren't ready for the miracle, but you can participate. Get them in groups of 50. Now, pass the bread and the fish. Now, collect the fragments. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, Peter, it seems to me we need some tax money that you're talking about. Tell you what, go fishing. Faith starts with little things. 
Faith starts with little stuff, not big stuff. Then eventually it was, okay, you think you can walk with me? Step out of that boat, walk on the water. Okay. Wait a second, there's wind and waves. And Peter endured a lot of correction and rebukes and failures, steps backwards to become who he became. So don't ever grow weary while you're doing well, my friends. Maybe you had a bad week, but you're here. (laughs) And lastly, and this is, oh man, their faith. Now this is where it gets exciting. You got to turn with me. I'm sorry, but you have to go in your Bible uh, to Mark chapter 2. Oh, my goodness. And then we're going to bring it home, and you're going to be like, oh, it all makes sense now in Jesus' name. And verse 1, Mark chapter 2. And again, he, being Jesus, entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. If you ever want to know what to preach, preach the word. Verse 3, then they came to him. Everybody say they. Came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. Now, if someone is paralyzed, and this is before the days of motorized wheelchairs, okay? If someone's paralyzed, how many of y'all know? They're not getting around very well. Okay, so them, four people, bring this paralyzed person to Jesus. But then they could not, verse 4, could not come near him because of the crowd. There's no room. So they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw, your faith is visible. When Jesus saw their faith. And then we read the rest of the story. That paralyzed man walked out of there. God's faith. God gave you a measure of faith. God gave you the ability to have endowments of faith. God gave you the ability to grow your faith. You have been given a measure. You've got faith. Let's talk about your faith. Your faith is how you receive from God. Your faith is how you receive and access God's grace. Your faith is how you receive salvation. Your faith is how you grow in the kingdom. Your faith matters. But if I could just get us one more step today, are you ready? One more step. God's faith becomes your faith. But don't stop there. Let your faith become their faith. The their faith that carries the people who can't get there. Carry them to Jesus. God's faith to your faith to their faith. And their faith carried him. And their faith, when there was no way, their faith made a way. And when it seemed like all hope was lost, they said, no, we're breaking up with a hole in the roof, baby. Your faith becomes their faith. And together, we are their faith, helping the people of West Central Indiana find their way to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Told you I was going somewhere. If looks could kill, I'd have been dead 20 minutes ago. Got to preach by faith. You're going to go by faces, you'll be schizophrenic. Isn't that right, Pastor Danny? I don't know. We already covered this, Pastor. Don't you look so holy back there, Vonda? God gave you faith. 
you develop your faith. But it's not just for you. It's not just for you. Because your faith is carrying people today all over the world to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are two places in Brazil, Brother Mike, that are having church this morning. They've already had it three hours ahead of us. Parenha and the other one I can't pronounce. And buddy, the faith of this church, the faith of this church built churches in Brazil. There are three families that woke up, they're getting ready to wake up, in Tijuana, who are waking up on a bed this morning, on a floor, with a roof over their heads, because your faith carried them to Jesus. There are people in Uganda right now, 22,500 people last October made a decision to give Jesus their hearts because of your faith. We are the there, faith carrying people to Jesus. We are the church of Jesus Christ, the church triumphant. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege and an honor to be part of the blessed body of Christ because together we will take the gospel to West Central Indiana and the world. <laughs> Praise God. So now I'm done. But I'll leave you with three questions. Number one, have you received God's measure of faith? I ask you that during praise and worship. And three people said, I want to receive that today. Number two, is your faith exceedingly growing and abounding? That is between you and the Holy Spirit. Allow him to have his way in you. And number three, will you step out in faith to let your faith become their faith, bringing others to Jesus, not giving up, and finding a way to make it happen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now I'm done. Now, I'm going to, because we had a lasagna supper, I'm going to pray. I'm going to dismiss families with kids first. Do not pass bathroom, or actually pass the bathroom, and go get your kids. And then we can slowly begin meandering that way for the lasagna supper. I'm going to stay down here instead of being at the doors for a few minutes, because I'm going to pray for people here today. I just feel it led to pray and lay my hands on people. So if you need prayer, especially for something in your body, I'm going to lay hands on you. Okay, Andrea, why don't you stay with me and help me do that? Or do you have to go get Sarah? She, gets, she checks herself out. <laughs> yeah, we're terrible parents. Is there a parenting seminar going to happen sometime soon? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless these people in spirit, soul, and body. And I just declare our faith is abounding and exceedingly growing as our faith collectively becomes the faith that carries people to Jesus. Amen. We're dismissed. Well, hi there. I'm Pastor Matt. I just want to take this moment and say thank you so much for tuning in to the ministry of Soul Harvest Church Online. And it's a privilege to minister to you each and every time. And I just want to invite you to be a living and active part of our vision to touch the world from West Central Indiana. And if you've been blessed by our ministry, I would ask you to very strongly consider sowing into our ministry to provide that our ministry would continue to go deeper and wider to impact people just like you all around this world that cost the precious blood of Jesus. So I would appreciate a gift of any amount. And, and I would ask if you're on YouTube, click the link below. If you're online on our website, click uh, Give Online. Or if you're on our app, hit the Give Online tab, and it'll take you through a couple easy steps. 
and you'd be able to sow. And we just pray God's richest blessing on you today. Thank you. God is good. His word is true. And it works in your life, friend.